We're going to look at a few verses from Luke chapter 9. Luke's Gospel, St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 9. The last five verses. 57 to 62. I don't know what it might have been like for you growing up. But as children in my neighborhood, when mom or dad went out to run an errand or to visit somebody, we wanted to go with them. We would often ask to go with them, to follow them. There could be an adventure unfolding and we didn't want to miss it. Of course, there were occasions when we did go, and we discovered that we probably should have stayed home. It wasn't an adventure. It wasn't fun. It was boring. Dull. No excitement whatsoever. And then we would keep on at our parents, begging them, let's go home, let's go home, let's go home. As we get older, of course, we recognize we have to be more careful about choosing to follow. And most people are followers. We follow politicians. We follow sports heroes. We follow music celebrities. We, we follow actors, actresses. Whenever these people are around, there's a crowd following them. We need to be careful as to who we follow. And we have to be careful because there are those little ones following us. In Luke's Gospel, you will find that wherever Jesus was, there were followers. There was always a crowd. What did they want from him? What did they hope to see? Did they follow him because of his teaching? He taught as no other had taught. He taught with authority. And he often challenged the existing understanding of the people. He healed the sick. He restored sight to the blind. He restored hearing to the deaf. Some people had even witnessed him raising the dead. So the crowds were drawn to him and followed him. Jesus 
among those followers were followers. Disciples. Those who were beginning to understand his purpose. Those who were beginning to understand his message about God's kingdom. But Jesus was always careful to make clear his expectations. This is what we find in this part of the gospel. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. What does he mean when he says this? I think he's saying, don't get the wrong idea. You're welcome to follow me. But this isn't going to be an easy road. This isn't going to be all roses and lovely things. Wild animals like foxes have, have places to live. Birds have nests to live in. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. There is a gospel preached today in our world that says if you follow Jesus, you can have everything you want. Everything you want. If you don't have it, these people tell us you must be doing something wrong. The interesting thing is, that's not what Jesus says. Jesus says to this man who volunteers to follow, he just steps up to him and says, I'm going to follow you wherever you go. You might not have a place to sleep tonight. You might not have breakfast tomorrow morning. You might not have a coat to wear. You might not have a lot of things if you follow me. It will cost you. Are you ready to pay the price? Earlier in this gospel, and we covered this the last time I was here, Jesus said, if anyone will come after me, if anyone will be my disciple, if anyone will follow me, they must deny themselves, deny themselves, take up their crosses every day and follow me. Verse 59, he said to another man, follow me. But the man replied, 
Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Now in the first instance, recognize someone volunteered, stepped up and said, I I'll follow you wherever you want to go. But in this case, Jesus points someone out and says, you, follow me. But the man replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. The famous two words, I don't know how it translates, but first, let me bury my father. A noble thing to do, yes? Being a Jewish person, a very noble thing to do, expected of him that he would care for his parents, that he would so honor his parents, that he would give his father a proper burial. Of course, in the context, we understand that his father is not dead yet. If he was dead, this man wouldn't be there in the crowd. He would be with his family burying his father. So what he's saying is, I will follow you, but first, let me stay at home until my dad dies. Sounds reasonable. The response from Jesus is not one we might expect. We might expect Jesus to say something, that's okay, that's nice, I, I understand that. You, you go home, you, you take care of your mom and your dad, and when your dad dies and, and you have them all buried and tucked away, then, then catch up with us. But that's not what's going to happen here. You see, a few verses before this section, Jesus has already indicated that he has set his heart to go to Jerusalem. He knows that in doing so, he commits himself to what the Father has in store for him. I've been calling it the Jerusalem Agenda. And the Jerusalem Agenda is Jesus is going to die. He's already indicated this on more than one occasion to his disciples. They still don't quite understand it. And so this would-be disciple needs to know there is no but first let me. If this person is coming to life spiritually, if the light is dawning, if the message is getting through, if they are understanding God's plan, they must act now. Now, now, 
No, but first let me. Jesus says, let the dead bury their dead. You go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Verse 61. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. There it is again. But first, Jesus replied, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back. It's fit for service in the kingdom of God. In that day, in that culture, in that place, in that time, and maybe you are familiar with this farming practice. An animal pulled the plow. The farmer held the plow. The farmer chose a mark. He drove the animal in that line. He followed the mark. He kept the line straight. If he looked back, no straight line. Jesus says, you see the mark, follow the mark. You can't look back. It doesn't work that way. You've heard God's call. You know what he wants. What did the children say? If you know what God wants, and I quote, do it, do it, do it! That's not complicated. <laughs> but we love to complicate things. <laughs> Distractions. <laughs> Excuses. <laughs> Delays. <laughs> Road hazards. <laughs> Compromising. <laughs> Indecision. <laughs> Procrastination. But first, let me. Perhaps someone is here tonight. You know what it says. You've heard the pastors preach. You've heard disciples testify or witness about their salvation. And Jesus is saying to you, follow me. What's your answer? But first, this book says, we have now. Yesterday, gone. Tomorrow, 
Who knows? By God's grace, we will be here. We could be with him. So, how can we afford but first let me? Later in Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 13, Jesus says this, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The last sentence again. You cannot serve both God and money. That stands. That's true. But let's take out the word money. And now there's a blank. You cannot serve both God and power, prestige, ego, pride, fame, celebrity, family, partner, children, parents, church. You cannot serve both God and anything else. There is no but first, let me. Are you following him? Are you following only him? When I was a little boy, we used to sing a chorus in Sunday school. We sang it here this morning. The simple words are, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The second verse says, The world behind me, the cross before me. You get that? The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back. And then there's a third verse. Perhaps the most difficult of the three. Though no one join me, still I will follow. What if I go home first and my parents say no? What if I check this out with any other power source in my life? And that influence says no. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. 
If you aren't following him, I give you kind puro ke do binawi. If you aren't following only him, I give you kind time ho puro ke do binawi. Will you decide to do that now? What? Kan on pasuli na. Let's pray. Kan do. Father God, you gave us your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be the Lamb of the world, the Lamb of God, to take away the sins of the world. Thank you for taking away my sins and inviting me to follow Jesus. Give me grace. Give me strength. Give me power to be faithful to you, to let my light shine, to be the salt of the earth, to challenge all the world around me to join me in following Jesus. Show me my excuses and take them away from me so that I might follow no turning back. No turning back. In Jesus' name.